Hello, and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover, and today I have with me David Graham. Hi, David. How are you? I'm fine, Greg. How are you? Very good. So <laughs> I wanted to just start out real quick for our audience, and I wanted to share some photos of yours so they have a good idea of the kind of things that you do. And I, I selected photos on the web, and I, uh, of course, had to choose this one <laughs> right away. <laughs> I, th Good. I think this well, is one of your more famous photos. It is. That's true. Yeah, I was very lucky. And um, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, out in the desert, 1986. And um, it took one shot. <laughs> it, um, it's, I mean, I was shooting 8 by 10 Back then, it was uh, about $10 a shot. Now it's about $50 a shot. Wow. And it's, it, you know, it's it's hard to pull it out and fire it. So this is, that was a fantastic photo. And what where is this one from? This is in Pocatello, Idaho. And uh, it was on a uh, 1981 uh, road trip uh, with my late wife, Janine Vinay. She's on the left. And this, uh, it's, you know, we were driving on the way back from California and I just saw, I saw that pickup truck in the back that said happy birthday. And then mm -hmm. wound up schmoozing with the people that owned the motel. And the, uh, the wife was really awkward. So I put her in the background and, <laughs> and the husband was just like right out of central casting. Uh -huh. So I put him up front and then uh, Janine was doing her best Edith Gowan look. Do you so. pose them or do they, was this just what they chose? It's uh, usually I pose them. Hmm. Interesting. So. I like the composition of that. Good. This one is just a stunner. I thought this was <laughs> just fantastic. It's, uh, it's yeah. morbid, but funny. Aren't, those of you who aren't looking closely, uh, the this um, headstone says gone home on the front door. <laughs> oh, and I thought, man. wow, that's great. This was cheating a little bit. God, you're just catching me craig um <laughs> i was doing a, a an artist in residence at uh, risd rhode island school of design and one of the students had a picture of that headstone and i just said where is it i gotta get there <laughs> so well, my picture was much different than that student so that that was okay and uh this one i just love how all the, uh, the different layers in the in the photo it just right. it's just fantastic <laughs> well Is you it... know as i said i was was and i still do shoot with the 8x10 camera and i you just try and get as much into the negative as you can so yeah this had that wonderful it had a cadillac on the in the billboard and then it had the uh, continental in the foreground and everything else it just it was hard to go wrong but you know i remember clicking the picture and bang that that continental left Ooh. people were already in the car ready to go For, fortuitous yep and then this one just i just love the, the the little bits of color i know i well i like the fact that you had a uh, serious farming and then in the foreground you had kind of suburban farming mm -hmm. and Ooh, this is that's in mommy nice. uh ohio so. uh, Ooh, this yeah. was my big hit when I was in graduate school. Was it? Oh, so this is going way back. 1979. Yep. Uh, oh. This is the um, studio of Marge Gap. And I, I tried desperately back in December. I was having a show in Philadelphia. And this was going to be in the show. And I, was, I hadn't seen Marge in ages and ages. But I could not find her. Hmm. None of none of the friends, none of anybody. Blah blah hmm. blah. Mystery so, photo. Yeah. This one I was very familiar with when you showed it. Snyderman, you were showing this one. That's right. Yeah, that's the cover picture for Land of the Free. Yeah. And um, it was the idea with that book. Uh, it was a book, and it, it there were also a number of uh, solo shows that went with it, and it's. Um, it was about impersonators to start with. And then it also had reenactors such as this one. And it was my neighbor in um, Tyler State Park where I was uh, living in one of the farmhouses. And this gentleman the was living in one of the others. And ultimately 
when we moved out of that house that we were in, his family moved into our house. So it was very. Huh. You know, it's the exercise bike that really makes it for me. I, I mean, know, that changes the one that everything. Got a, the one that got away was his <laughs> wife. And uh, when I was setting up the camera, she was standing on the exercise bike uh, mm. with her hand, her arms like this, uh. just <laughs> blonde hair. And, uh -huh. you know, she was very vain, though, and there was no way there were, I was going to get a picture of that. But that was good. But here, this is uh, I'm doing the same thing in this picture as the last one in that I'm using a doorway as a frame. Yes. And um, I think um, the idea of a frame within a frame is very important. It's very classical, very uh, early modernism. <laughs> really, I mean, yes. the painters would do that. That's Matisse, right? No, so. Oh, yeah, I love that. And the uh, repoussoir, I like very much myself and other things like that. <laughs> and and this, uh, this is kind of like close to the the other the first sign, but... It, it it's not quite as good but it's no. still useful it's still it's a humdinger yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh lastly i had to show this one because uh you know when i we did alan's lane show right. we had this one up and this was a, a fan favorite of mine really good fun. this was great uh yes the i i love it that that was the most photogenic little house or cabin i'd ever yeah. And, the whole uh, catalog is great. Yeah. Thank you. It's, I uh, yeah, I've I've shown it since I moved out here to Wisconsin. I've uh, had two shows with it, with that body hmm. of work, and each time it's you know, people like it. Fantastic. I like. It. <laughs> I was thinking about it just within the last forty eight hours, thinking about that's such a fine group of pictures. <laughs> I wish I could show that again. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if we can't get you something somewhere. So yeah, make that, start. Make that happen. <laughs> that would be so great. let me uh, let me ask you. I got I got a bunch of great questions. Uh, some of them are uh, softballs, and some I want to try and stump you with. Uh, mm -hmm. Curious, what was your first exposure to art? Do you have a first memory of art? Yes, I do. What is um, it? growing up in Abington, Pennsylvania? Um, my family was great. They had no art well my mom she liked good antiques and she did buy some decorative kind of paintings that were actually pretty good in retrospect but the rest of the family no mm -hmm. and um the uh, for instance my brother did not go to either a gallery or a museum until he was 60 Wow. And that's only because I was in a show at the uh, Michener Museum in Doylestown and he lived about 10 minutes away. <laughs> so so anyway, blah, blah, blah. I went to um, Gettysburg College mm -hmm. to start with after high school. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I had to take a, a required class in art. And so I did, um, you know, modern art up till 1945 or what exactly was the name. Anyway, it completely blew me away and totally mm. changed my attitude about the world and really what I should be studying. This was... one class, it was 8 a.m. in the morning and I stayed awake <laughs> for the whole thing. It was ridiculous. Was it was not fine art, but uh, photography a part of your childhood at all? Mm, I can sort of say that yes, because my father uh, took pictures of all kinds of stuff yeah. and uh, we had slides and I would put on little slideshows down in the uh, right. playroom, the basement, stuff like that. And um, But my beef was that he shot a lot of Polaroid, which didn't last very long. And then, you know, a lot of uh, Kodachrome and stuff like that, which was hard so, to deal with. So you had that first class. How long after that did you decide that you were going to make art like when you when when did you first start making art well um <laughs> the other <laughs> this is really important folks so get out your notebook <laughs> uh, i went home for or no actually there was it happened about the same time as that class um my friend mark daniels who was a friend of mine in high school he uh 
went to the Most Kingdom College out in Ohio. He came home for Thanksgiving and he had these notebooks. He knew how to draw and he mm-hmm. had all these cartoons that he had drew, uh, drawn. And then he also had photographs. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And um, <laughs> I thought, well, I can't draw worth beans. Uh-huh. And he's really good at it. Really very much like R. Crumb. Uh-huh. And uh, anyway, so I said, I could do that. And so he <laughs> said, course. okay, I'll take you to New York. We'll buy you a camera. And lo and behold, that's what happened. Wow. Wow. And, and then and then it was magic from the get-go. Uh, yeah, there was love. <laughs> I did love it. And um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Somehow my pictures got me into RISD. Uh-huh. Or no, no, didn't get me into RISD. But uh, I had to, it was my first application and it's sort of, huh. and anyway, I wound up getting into uh, Philadelphia College of Art, which is now the University of the Arts. And huh. uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I got really sick of Gettysburg College. Um, I tried five majors <laughs> and then I said, I just got to get out of here. And so a friend of mine talked me into going to um, uh, University of the, or Philadelphia College of Art. Wow. I, I think I kind of muddled that whole little, you know, paragraph or two. Sorry about that. No, no, that was good. Yeah, I got some good good stuff there. I, I need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I've always been fascinated by uh, your photographs, and especially I, I love the people that you photograph. You know, you can really sometimes get some interesting people in there. Are there any that you'd like to ever consider go back and photographing again? Would you ever consider that? Uh, I have done that. I have gone back and photographed people again. There's one guy. Oh, damn. I don't think I have it at hand. If I'd known you were going to ask this question, I'd be prepared. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. he. But Why so, Why would you photograph him? I Oh, because it's somebody that I'm going back to. But okay. yeah, they're like... Oh, it, yes. I remember him. Right. That's Little Peak. Yeah. And then you have up there... Whoa! See if I can reach that up there. There you have Elizabeth Taylor. Right. Oh my God. And what do we have down there? Oh, uh, we have Midge Mattel. I have gone back and rephotographed Midge Mattel. Uh, I I still don't know her real name, but she's kind of a stand-up <laughs> comedian, and uh, she lives in South Philly someplace. And uh, when you shoot, uh, do you ever do you ever need reshoots? I mean, do you? Oh, is that, uh, is that a process that you do or you just go with the flow? Well, um, let me tell you what happened. Uh, so eventually, um, oh, there was a whole big, you know, I taught at, you know, okay, brief history, <laughs> okay. um, went to Philadelphia College of Art. Yep. They forgot to teach me how to make a living. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. I, I graduated and what did I do? I waited on tables, I bartended mm-hmm. and then um, somehow I got into Tyler mm-hmm. Tyler School of Art and got my master's degree and that led me to and why do you do that? Because if you have a degree a college degree and a master's degree you can mm-hmm. actually teach in college which means yep. three days a week right eight months a year right <laughs> so anyway so what happened was at um uh i think it was 1999 or something like that or no uh 1990 i got stabbed in the back at moore college of art where i was teaching mm. and i just quit teaching the yeah. hell with it. Yeah. and there is a i've heard those stories and, before what I've heard yeah. those kind of stories before. Yeah, yeah, it's nasty shit. And um, so I decided I had to make a living. And all of a sudden, you know, there were no teaching jobs around. So I started, I put my art photography into portfolios. And in fact, I can see one over there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't needed in a long, long time. Mm. But I took my pictures such as whatever Mm -hmm. and uh, I turned them into a portfolio three and I had three portfolios and I would schlep them around through in New York to all the different uh, magazines Mm. 
And um, so I started getting jobs. And nice. because one, I was in Philadelphia, a major metropolis. So there were often a magazine would need some important person to photograph and I would go do it. Yeah. And or uh, somebody would like my pictures and they'd say, okay, why don't you go to Mason, Texas mm -hmm. and photograph these people out there? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> So I had to learn how to do that. And at the time, it was not digital yet. I, yeah. would, I, I had to learn how to use Polaroids and use, learn how to use strobes and lights right. and all that stuff. So you would, because you usually didn't have a chance to go back. The answer to your question is, <laughs> do you ever go re right. people? And you just you, you couldn't allow yourself that luxury. Yeah. Because you had to do it as a job. Well, you actually kind of, pre-answered my next question because I my my question was how do you go about finding your subjects and I guess that probably prepared you in a way to go out and find people for your photographs yes uh they um well sometimes you'd get a an art director who would give you a job because it was right up your alley or my mm -hmm. alley in the case may be and so you know uh Elvis uh uh, conventions elvis impersonator conventions hey mm -hmm. well i was doing impersonators right boom perfect way i went and i would get a job for that or this and you know it was a wonderful thing and then i would just sort of then i would start doing a little research right i'm doing that the way we do it now <laughs> <laughs> we it wasn't a phone book it. <laughs> we weren't doing it that way. I would just tell everybody that I knew it's like, hey, you know, I'm doing these impersonators. Do you know anybody like that? Yeah. Like the guy, the uh, soldier, you know, the grenadier, right. uh, Hessian soldier. Um, you know, he was a neighbor. Right. I, you know, he he told me he did that. And it's like, okay, cool. I'll come over to your house. And um, and other people, the mummers parade, I would go every year. Right. And there were lots of impersonators in every um uh, mummers parade in philadelphia and so uh on it seems day, like you work in series but it also seems like you work on multiple series at the same time is that i did work on a number of series um and i mean there's some evidence like right there mm -hmm. and right there mm -hmm. and uh where else right there <laughs> <laughs> These are black and white ones. But I'm zoom in, to everyone. Remind right. myself that I don't always <laughs> need to do color. So, um, well, yeah, there, uh, are, there are a number of things. But I, I, go ahead, ask me. What am I doing now as a project? Uh, sure. What are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I re relatively recently moved from Philadelphia, where I had been for my entire life, and except for that little zit of Gettysburg College, mm -hmm. you know, except for that. Um, because the rest of the time I've been in Philadelphia. Anyway, um, my lovely wife, uh, Terry Warpinski, uh, and I weren't married yet. And uh, we started, it was during COVID, you know, we, we would talk to each other, we would do FaceTime, we would do Zooming, we would do all kinds of stuff. We would watch movies simultaneously. She's out here in Wisconsin, I was in Philadelphia, and we'd go one, two, three. <laughs> and we'd watch movies and stuff like that. Anyway, so I came out here, I got stuck to it and her, and it was wonderful. And so my current project is photographing Wisconsin. Oh, wow. I know. Well, so, I'm curious. I mean, it, 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 it's a lot of it is kind of the, the landscape and where the landscape and the uh, humans meet. That's, that's Interesting. Kind of what I'm doing oh, I can't wait to see what you, you're going to I can't wait for the next book, really. That's what ah, it'll, good it'll have to be. So. So you've been photographing for a while, and I know you have different series, but how do you feel that your work, most artists' work, changes over time? Yeah. Uh, how do you, do you feel that your work has changed over time? Or if so, how? Um, it has mm, parts of, you know, this, this photographing of Wisconsin is remarkably similar. I mean, the way that I'm assembling the pictures, mm -hmm. um, is very similar to what I was doing uh, back when I got out of graduate school and, you know, was shooting the eight by 10 camera. There's a way, you know, because as I said, okay, 
was ten dollars a shot back then, and now it's fifty dollars a shot. So you, you're careful. You're really yeah. careful, and you assemble it, and you're using color, and you have incredible definition of the subject. So in that way, there's a lot of what I was doing then. I'm still doing now, yeah. and that's that's cool with me. It sounds like you. Yes, I have done a lot of other little projects. Some are more evolved than others. So it sounds like you've been able to streamline the process though over over time. You know what you're you're doing when you walk up to to an image. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. And um, you know, all yes. Also, now I carry with me. For instance, today I had to run some errands and. I had with me and it was, you know, whenever I'm in the car, I make sure that I have this big eight by 10 case, which mm -hmm. is what all I used to carry. But now I also have a backpack that's got, you know, two smallish di digital cameras mm -hmm. and then one gigantic, unbelievably expensive. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. Camera. Yeah. And do you, you know, cause that, that ruined my next question, which was, you know, tell me about the equipment you, you use. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> how about printing though? So how do you print? Do you do you print? Do you farm it out? Okay, black and white, yeah. I do. I'm on a bit of a hiatus, but I'm hoping to pull together a black and white project that I can take in my mind and in reality um, this coming fall, winter, because uh, Terry and I got artists and residencies in Iceland. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, so I'm thinking of um, kind of I because I really like doing black and white, and yeah, I did have I have a lot of projects that I've done over the years, and um, you know I'm thinking about maybe I'll just do that. I'll do black and white. Like well, I don't need, I'm photographing w Wisconsin. I don't have to worry about yeah. Iceland for God's sake. Right. Well, tell tell so, me what do you what do you think about color though? Color? Yeah. What do you think about it? Like. Do you think of it in terms of, say, emotion or contrast or, you know, what, how do you approach it? Well, there's a certain aspect that I consider anytime I'm taking a picture uh, with color. I'm thinking about what kind, what kind of play is there between, you know, do they vibrate? Like I took a picture this, this afternoon, it might have been late morning, and um it was a Lincoln Continental, mm -hmm. you know, 1965 or something like that. And somebody had really gone berserk. And it was this, it, this color that somewhere was, oh, you can't tell how goldish yellow right. that is. But it's kind of like goldish yellow metallic. Oh, my uh -huh. God. I was like, oh, what have they done to this car? It's kind of fantastic. <laughs> and at the same time. And then behind it <clears throat> was a tractor trailer. Uh -huh. Um that's bright orange uh -huh. and the two of them together were just yeah i've always felt so that you loved color saturation i do love color saturation and uh i do love sometimes in this case today they were two very similar yet um abrasive colors objects hmm. but other times i will just you know move things around yeah you know, like that picture in, in Marge Gap's studio. I mean, we went in there and just moved <laughs> everything around to get uh -huh. it right. And Figured when out. I was doing, um, I have to turn my phone off. The, um, uh, yeah, I will go in. You know, I did it a lot for magazines mm -hmm. because you're kind of taking, doing a portrait of somebody and part of that portrait is how they live. Yeah. So I've done very few pictures of, you know, somebody black and white mm -hmm. against seamless paper in a studio. Right. I just go, think of all that. Okay. Richard Avedon was great. <laughs> totally awesome. But that's not me. And um, so, so speaking of Avedon, are there other artists that you like to look at? Uh, are there any that actually inspire you or anything like that? Uh, well, you you've got Walker Evans. Okay. All right. Right there. Very That's nice. A Walker Evans picture that I got for $3.50 from what? the Library of Congress. All right. I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Gordon Parks, okay. you know, 
he's a big hero of mine and uh -huh. i love his black and white work and i love his color work it's just he's a genius was a genius when he was alive do you so, ever look at other artists who aren't photographers say like sculptors or crafts people or anything like that yep yeah, yeah we uh for our second anniversary uh terry and i went to uh new york and um we wound up being there longer than we expected and um you know five days of hitting all the museums and all the galleries and you know i mean you, you try to hit like there were two avidon shows at the time and also a Lee Friedlander show. Black, two black and white photographers loved them to death. We saw both shows twice. Hmm. And um, but then we, you know, went all through uh, MoMA and um, Guggenheim and hmm. the Met and a whole load of galleries down in Chelsea. You just and absorb so, it all. Absorb it all. Soak yeah. it all up. I mean, I do love these things in that you can <laughs> right. you know, remind you of what you saw in that gallery. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever go to a, a place and like, oh, I have to come back and photograph that? You do that often? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do. It's well, you know, I had to hustle back to the studio to do a favor for Terry. And I said, oh, OK, I'll come back. <laughs> so I came back, did the favor, got back in the car, drove up there, and it wasn't there anymore. The picture wasn't there. Um, you must but, that must happen none, quite a but, bit. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, in 1981, uh, dro was driving across the United States through Indianapolis and over the highway, just thinking, you know, God, got to get past this stuff, get out there where it's west, mm -hmm. and. Um, I was looking out the window and going, whoa, I'll have to remember that. It's, you know, exit number of whatever, whatever. Right. And damn, two years later, I got off at that exit. It was still nice. an incredible backyard. Nice. And I found it and I got a great picture out of it. And it's in, you know, it's in important pictures. Yeah. Well, I guess nowadays you can just drop a pin on your phone. Yes. I mean, rather than trying idea. to you know, remember easy. what exit it's easier now <laughs> right well one thing is when i was have done when i was doing um for instance only in america mm -hmm. which is not the first book i did but the second mm -hmm. uh you know there were yeah i sent out postcards to everybody in my rolodex mm -hmm. please tell me what you see and um that's where i got all my tips i had a big map you, you that's know, fantastic in, mm -hmm. with bins, and when there got to be a bunch over here zzz, i'd fly out there and my friend gene kennedy would pick me up wow so that's the the official david graham method Matt, yeah <laughs> <laughs> a big map i like it yeah big map big map with pins is important so i i have just one question left for you it's okay. my stumper question um mm. just because mm. sometimes i ask artists this and sometimes they get right away and sometimes they're, they freeze up it's a very simple question. What does making art do for you? Oh man, makes me happy, <laughs> makes me full, makes me okay. really excited. It's uh it's a great thing. Um yeah. I mean, I it is different. I mean, it's not like all right, so I'm in a studio right now and there are no windows. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Um so I love the idea that I can go out and uh, immerse myself in some place some environment some amongst amongst some people and mm -hmm. uh so i you know i love doing that and little uh, food for the soul food for the soul yeah i would have a hard time you know being in, in oh i've been in some studios that are just so depressing <laughs> you know it's dark it's got flowers uh -huh. and, and stuff like right that. yeah and, yeah well you I, must I love all the light that you have out in wisconsin what's that you must love the light that you have out there. Oh, uh, when it's nice, yeah, it's great. Oh, but then yeah. nobody told me about you know November through <laughs> April. It's just gray and it's just. Ugh. Well, it's you can always through. come back and visit us in Philly. We're, we'll be yeah. glad to have you. <laughs> okay, good. I'd be glad to do it. Well, right. thank you. Uh, thank you very much for answering that question, and thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in um, to Art Show. Please make sure to like and subscribe 
so we can keep doing these artist interviews. We have a lot of fun with them. David, thank you again. It was a pleasure speaking with you, and I can't wait until we see you the next time. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, giving me a call. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot, David. Take care. Bye-bye.